Hi guys, here we are at Epcot. It's the holiday festival of the holidays, and we're about to start trying some of the foods that they have available. This festival ends by the 30th of December, which means by the time you see this, it won't be here, but this might give you some ideas when the menus come out for next year. We're gonna look at what gluten-free options are available. We're going to try some different foods, and we're gonna start with dessert. And why are we starting with dessert? Well, A, it's, it's dessert. We're, we're on vacation. Two, actually. I just finished eating brunch at Wine Bar George, which hopefully some of you have seen. If you haven't, I'll put the link to it right up there. And we're gonna do a little quick dessert. Now, this is one that I tend to just poo-poo, but uh, given that I just wanted something cold and sweet, and I think it's the only cold and sweet dessert option available, the others are, are room temperature or warm desserts, I think it's time to go to this one. We are gonna head over to the Holiday Cheer Booth. Okay, so the Holiday Sweets and Treats has a chocolate peppermint sundae, but they also have a chocolate peppermint shake, both alcoholic and not, on their menu, and it's safe. Even though it's not marked safe, I double-checked and they called the chef. It's got little sprinkles on the top, like crunched up peppermint bark. Uh. Mm. It's got peppermint tea in it. Mm. I didn't see straws though. Mm. And it's nice, I like the peppermint tea. It's not super pepperminty, but it's got a nice light peppermint edge to it. This is awesome. That's what performers are singing. Not sure how this is Christmassy, but that's okay. Oh. Nice, bright, and happy. And it's hot enough today that this cold is really useful. And there's a little child staring at this longingly, like walking backwards now. Because she probably wants something sweet and she saw this. I will. I'm gonna enjoy this. Um, it's not, like I said, it's not super sweet. Obviously has dairy. Nice level of peppermint and an earthier peppermint in the shake because they use peppermint tea. Good chocolate base. It's not as thick as the shake shake. It's more like, um, it's got more of a frosty because they're using the tea so it's gonna crystallize a little more rather than being just cream. But it's very good. So I'm gonna finish this and then, uh, and then we're gonna head on to other foods. Hi guys. All right, so we have gone to the new uh, kitchen that does the nut treats. It does pecans and cinnamon, uh, let's try this again. It does cinnamon roasted pecans, cashews, and almonds, and it also does fresh roasted chestnuts. Now, uh, for those of you who do the Renaissance Festival, you will know we can get all of those sweet nuts on a regular basis from good old Johnny Fox's, Fox's? Johnny Fox's wife's, wife, ex-wife her booth um, and the big difference here is the chestnuts hold on I'm, I'm reorganizing my bag here um, so but they're still warm now for those of you who've ever gotten the nuts from Johnny Fox's wife's booth um, you will know that if you wait a long time and they get too cold they start to break your teeth because the sugar gets so hard uh, so we're gonna try one now fresh they look much the same as what you would have there, and then we're going to even taste. It's a slightly different coating. It feels like it's a slightly different coating. A lot of sugar. Warmth of that cinnamon. And I love the pecan flavor on these. I prefer the pecans, so that's what I got. Um, yeah, tons and tons of sugar. I mean, you can even see the sugar kind of crystallized on it. But that one was good because that was so warm and it was, um, the sugar was still soft. So, if you get these, the best time it happens is when they're fresh. Now, the exciting part are the chestnuts. And the chef reminded me before you eat them, you need to peel the shell off because shell and he was just pan roasting them I mean sauteing them up it was fascinating to watch and I really haven't had chestnuts I think I've tried them once or twice it's kind of a meat nut sure what hold on 
That was not fair to the chestnut. Oh my goodness. So, so much sugar on my mouth. Hold on. All right. So it softens the nut a lot when they roast it like this. Got people in for Britain. Because everything's been back open. Welcome home. So, outside of them I see a lot of salt. I can tell you that this nut, until I just put my fingers from the one nut onto this one, not as salty. They get, and this may just be chestnuts, and they're roasted. Get um, sort of a creamy slash powdery consistency to them. And this, the salt kind of helps. Just to give it a different kind of a texture, a flavor. It's good. When I go out of my way to get them. If I was not a fan of chestnuts, probably not. But it's nice to have a protein-heavy, savory snack available at the festival. You know, it comes in a little half bag. It's kind of cute. Good. So I'm going to close these up and pack them. They cooled off enough that I don't want to miss melt my peppermint bark. And I'm going to have a whole bunch of sweet treats when I get back to the room. But yeah, so whole shell was like popped open and roasted off, and that's really cool. I wish I could use these as mulch or something. That would be nice if they could. We're going to see if we can hit the uh, one of the last food booths that I need to try, which is the uh, Hawaiian booth. They have salmon I want to give a try to, and we'll go from there. Hi, guys. Ah, okay, so we've gone to the Hawaii booth. Uh, we have gotten the Lomi Lomi salmon, salmon which is uh, basically a sushi-grade type salmon with yucca chips and salmon roe and a mayonnaise and some green onion. It looks very pretty. The picture is going to go in right here. And I think the idea is to scoop it with the yucca chips, but it looks like there's more stuff than salmon. So I'm going to scoop it up here. Okay. Heavy onion. Very salty. It's like salmon roast salty though. I don't know that the actual salmon itself is salty. Really salty. I'm gonna try to taste without the yucca chip. It's still really salty on its own. I'll try the yucca chip alone. So if you need salt, yeah, I'm wiping, seeing if I can wipe any salmon off of any of this because if the chips are unsalted and the uh, whatever they've added salt to in here was less salted, it'd be good. A lot of fish and a whole lot of scallion. And the yucca chip gives some crutch. But I almost wish that um, there was more cucumber or something in here so that it was a bright, crisp, but not salty bit. The salmon itself doesn't need to be salty. Yeah, like the salmon's kind of fishy tasting, you know? And if you, yeah, obviously it's fish, it's fishy tasting, but it's fishy tasting rather than just bright fish. So am I glad I got it? Yes. Would I do it again? If I'm okay with salt and I love salmon, yes, that would be the difference because I'm okay with salmon. I love salmon, but... So good. Not great. So much green onion. Mm, no. That's a 
tell you something. I'm not finishing it. Too salty. Too, too salty. No, no, no. Yeah, so, meh. Meh. But we're gonna go on now. I've got a few other things to do here in the park today before we have dinner and we'll next big dining thing you should be seeing from me the next week is going to be from Shula's if all goes well. If you haven't done so already, please remember to like this video, hit the subscribe button, go ahead and share this for people if you think someone else is going to be able to enjoy it or learn something from it. I don't have a tagline. Singing hey ho a maiden's life one two three. Hey ho a maiden's life won't you drink with me?